uh, let me address um, the Bailey family uh, as well as the uh, friends who have who are here today and who have also been here throughout the these proceedings. <clears throat> the um, the loss in which you have clearly suffered is um, is unimaginable. The uh, court was certainly moved by the uh, words and the victim impact statements that uh, were presented earlier this week. Uh, I um, have been through these types of proceedings numerous times. Sometimes family members hope or expect that whatever the sentence is, uh, that somehow or another that's going to heal or provide closure. And I just want to warn you that it's not. It's not how it works. No matter what sentence this court imposes today, it cannot heal you. I cannot bring her back. I cannot... Um, provide a, a closure to this. It may close a chapter of this, but it will not close this for you. You still have a lot of healing to do, and I certainly am not going to take the place of any of your counselors or therapists, but my advice to you is simply this. Understand that the healing process takes time, and you have to move through the stages, and you have to allow each other to move through the stages at your own pace. Comfort each other, but understand that some of you may reach different phases of this healing process sooner than others. Um, your daughter and your sister are obviously... Her body is no longer present on this earth. However, her spirit lives on through each and every one of you. From what this court can tell, she was a quite a energetic, happy child. Um, some of you testified to the um, the fact that when you learned of her death, that part of you died as well. What I would suggest is that you fill that void with her spirit and her life that certainly lives on through each and every one of you. Allow Bailey Sunday fun days to return to your home. Allow laughter to return to your home because in depriving yourselves of that, frankly, you're continuing, uh, it would continue to victimize Tristan because that's not what she would want. She would want that happiness and the laughter to return and the joking between her siblings. That's what she, that's what she would truly want. You have to try to let go of some of the anger that you still feel. I think that's a big part of this process for you. Mr. Bailey, I want to address something that you mentioned, um, and that was the, uh, the process of this, uh, these court proceedings. Um, I know it's been a long 22 months uh, for your family as well as for this community. Um, justice at times can move a little bit slowly for those who uh, are thrust into it. Um, for those of us who practice it and live it and work it every day, I assure you that there are constitutional safeguards that are in place in this country and they're there for a very important reason. And sometimes that takes time to work through that process. And that can be frustrating. It can be agonizing at times. But we strive to make sure that we get things right the first time and that we do things the proper way. And I appreciated your comments, and I appreciated the patience that your family and the community has shown to the court system. These attorneys have worked diligently. They have had uh, on both sides. Uh, they have... Um, this is not their only case, sadly. Uh, this is the only courtroom in all of St. John's County with over 300,000 people who lo now live in, uh, in this community. Uh, we have one felony courtroom. So every felony, every murder, it takes place in this courtroom. And these attorneys 
are assigned to cases throughout this circuit. Um, I trust and I believe that they have done a diligent job in this case. And um, again, I, I recognize that it can certainly take some time and I appreciate the, the patience that you've shown and I hope that you understand uh, the necessity and making sure that things are done the proper way.